tonight we are going to talk about email list building today. Two weeks ago, we, we sort of talked about uh, setting up email lists and also what service providers were available for you when it comes to building a list. But uh, we also promised to circle back to the topic of how we are going to build a list. And uh, I think the best place to start is to talk about well, some people call them lead magnets, other people call, call them reader magnets, the same, the same thing, but, uh, but I think that's a good place to start. But what is a lead magnet, magnet or a reader magnet? Maybe we should start there, Autumn. That sounds good. And they're really, like you said, the same idea. Uh, what it really involves is finding something to give away for free, but it's not really free. Don't give it as free. You're giving it away in exchange for someone's email address, which they're trusting with you. So treat it well. But that is the really the prime idea. And that could be anything from even giving away a book, a free book that then offers another free book in exchange for an email, or it could be a book that you're selling. But what you're doing is you are giving away something from either the next book in the series works really well, but sometimes it's a, a pro, you know, previous book or a totally different book, but it is giving them away something like even hidden scenes. I don't know what you've seen, yes, where that works really well, but there's a lot of different things that people can give away to attract readers that are interested in their own book to sign up for something free, as well as give away their email address to you. Yeah, you, you can be, you can get really creative with it. I mean, uh, some people don't like to give away a full book. I mean, obviously, obviously it requires a lot of work to write a book and, uh, well, you spend money on editing and covers and whatnot. So some people don't like that. Uh, and if, if that's you, then you can get creative and you can give away like, um, an alternative ending to the novel, or you can, uh, maybe you had some scenes that you cut out of the book, uh, sort of, you, you can share those or it could be some background information on a character, like a character sheet with, with some information that is not shared in, in the novel itself. Um, it could, short it, stories, even. Short stories, yeah. Even sp spin-off uh, short stories of, of, of the novel. It, you, know, they, you can do a ton of things, and it doesn't have to be elaborate either. You know, you, you, a, a character dossier, it could be like a two-page PDF, for that matter. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be more. That, I think the main point is that it needs to be exclusive, meaning that it, it should not be something that you can get from somewhere else as well. Meaning, uh, and maybe logic would say that, well, um, people will like to get it for free. Uh, for example, let's say let's say you have a, a short story, for example, for sale for ninety nine cents, and then you make it exclusive by the fact that, okay, but you, instead of buying it for 99 cents, you can also sign up here and then you'll get it for free. That, that, could, that would be a line of thinking. But I think actually that it works counterproductive in the way that if you can get it somewhere, people actually wouldn't even sign up to get it for free. They will buy it instead for the 99 cents because they don't, there is certain reluctance to sign up for stuff. So it has to be something that, it, okay, this is exclusive and you can only get it here. Uh, I think that works a lot better than if you're trying to say that it's exclusive, in, exclusive by the fact that you're getting something for free that you can also buy on Amazon, for example. I, I don't think it works that well. Though there is a whole train of thought where if you give away the second book in a series, that is for sale, but of course you'd be spending. You know, it should be a lot more than two ninety nine. I do give away the second book of my series if you sign up for it, but the book is priced at three ninety nine. So it is an exclusive, and there are a lot of people doing that. But I mean, I am definitely very tempted to try to do something completely exclusive that you can't buy anywhere else. I think that'd be a fun thing to do for my next series. So it's worth trying out. But there, it, I don't think people should limit themselves. But again, I'm giving away an entire book. And I do get people signing up to get that every single day. So it definitely is an interest, but there is a drawback to doing that as well, is that I get a lot of emails saying, hey, you gave away book one, you gave away book two. I would like the third one now for free. And that's always a fun conversation of explaining, you got two books, that was two years of my life, you're not getting the third one for free, sorry. <laughs> yeah, indeed. But, but I, I think... I think the the one difference to to this to what you just said there is the fact that 
when people have read your entire book and they get to the back of the book and here is a link to the second book for free, which of course you could go to Amazon and buy that book. But at that point in time, the people are fully invested in the story and, and in what you're doing already. So when you get to that stage, it makes sense to offer them at that point in time a free book. But my point was more if you're doing it up front, you know, before they even know you, they have not read anything about you. And if you're then offering, here is a free book, if you give me your email address, or you can go to Amazon and buy it for 99 cents or 2.99 for that matter, most people will buy it instead of giving you the email address. But of course, if they read the entire book and then you make the offer, then it's a different matter because then they know, okay. know of you and they know they like the book and they would want to keep reading. And then it becomes a matter of, of course, I'll get it for free then because, uh, you know, I have now, I'm now familiar with the author as well. So I, I, I don't mind as much giving away my email address. Right. That's very true. And I think that is one reason it definitely works. Uh, is having that already being invested and in, you know if you've done your book well that it leads into the next book and they want to see what's going to happen and they're in love with the characters it's an easy sell to get an email address and have them sign up for your email list in exchange for the book yeah indeed and and then of course the the, the add-on bonus of that is of course that uh, by then you know that you're getting the right people onto your email list because it's people who like your 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 writing and they like your work so so that's a very good bonus, you know, when you're giving things away for free up front, some of the people who end up on your list won't be the right people, so to speak. So some of them will, of course, end up unsubscribing again and all that. We talked about that two weeks ago and that happens. That's okay. Don't worry about it. But it is, of course, a more quality subscriber that you're getting if, if they're signing up from the back of the book than for uh, somebody who doesn't know you. Absolutely, it definitely makes a huge difference because that's that is one of the keys, and one of the things we'll talk about is that you you want people who are going to want what you're giving them, and who will become not just readers but fans of what you're doing, and that's sort of the key of why you're getting this email because you want them to buy from you in the future. So you want to make sure you're getting a quality audience. So make sure you're giving away something that makes sense for your book. If you're getting this email address from them. You know, make sure it's related to who you are and what you're writing and your characters and your what your story you're telling and what you plan on selling in the future. If you've done a one-shot genre, it might not be worth getting email addresses if that is so atypical of what you ever plan on writing. So keep that in mind as well. Make sure this is something about your brand and who you are as an author so that they're not confused why they signed up for you when you're only releasing, you know, paranormal romance, but they bought your detective story and that's what they really like. It won't work as well. Uh, step number one is that you need to have some sort of lead magnet or reader magnet, whatever you call it, doesn't matter. But you need, you need to have something that you're giving away free. So, so yeah, you need to figure out what, what that needs to be. But my advice would be make it exclusive uh, unless you are uh, only trying to get the sign up in the back of the book. but. The drawback of that, or let's say the positive, as we said before, was that you're getting quality sign-ups, but the drawback of it is that you need to sell a lot of books then. <laughs> and if, if you're not, if you don't have an email list, it might be difficult, more, at least more difficult to sell more books. Uh, so it's sort of a hen and the egg trouble you're in here. So, and, and for that purpose, uh, it does make sense to have some sort of uh, lead magnet that um, you're giving away up front, you know. Um, but if you're going to give something away, then you also have to have a mechanism by where they can get the download that you're giving them. And obviously it should be a digital product. Uh, I sort of just assumed that everybody knew that, but just to make sure to mention that, of course it should be because then you can just give it to them and, uh, and they can download it and you don't have to worry about any shipping stuff and whatnot. You don't want to do that. So, but you need to have a mechanism by which they can then get the download. Uh, and that's where uh, sign-up forms comes into the picture. Definitely. I mean, that's what we talked about <clears throat> last week with the service providers. You can always host something on your own website if you know coding that, you know, they sign up. Um, WooCommerce has a few plugins where you can do this as well. So you could have it totally self-hosted where they come, they give you the email. By doing that, it takes them to another page where they can just go ahead and download 
what it ever is you're giving them. But definitely one of the easiest things is to go ahead and sign up for a mail service provider that provides you a landing page that collects the emails that that has them in a place where you're just going to go ahead and create an email, um, a newsletter that you will actually be sending to them later. Or like we talked about last week with automations where they immediately get that first email as soon as they sign up because you don't want to sign up and wait a day, two, three days until they get whatever it is they signed up for. They're going to be really annoyed if you cannot deliver whatever it is you offer them to for free within you know, the first hour. I've seen people you know, wait five minutes and if they don't have the free download, they're like, it's a scam. I just gave away my email and it's going to be totally spammed and I'm so angry. <laughs> Yeah, before you added the scam part, I was about to say that that's me. You know, I, I don't think that it's a scam. If, but, um, but if I do not get the email or the download within five minutes, I, I, I'm, I, I'm thinking something is wrong. There must be an error some, some place. You know, I, you know, we don't have patience today. today. You know, it should go fast, and certainly I should never wait an hour. So uh, then, then I would definitely think something is wrong. But uh, but yeah, I mean the, the the nice thing about the electronic setup is that um, the email service provider will send out the email instantly uh, after they sign up. And of course, this is uh, well, it might be a bit difficult to sort of explain. But as soon as you get into it, uh, unless you're going into Mailchimp, as I said last time, then it might be complicated. <laughs> but if you are using ConvertKit, at least. As soon as you get into it and you're setting it up, it, it's very intuitive. Uh, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's uh, you, you create the sort of the sign up form where you have have a picture and you write in the text of what it should say. So, for example, uh, just give me your email address and tell me where to send the blank, whatever it is that you're giving away. Uh, so you write that text in and then you get into the next session of the setup process where it will tell you or ask you to write the uh, email that follows which is going to deliver it so you basically just upload your pdf for example if it's a pdf you just upload it there write the text in the email and that will automatically be sent and delivered to the um, to the subscriber right after they have uh, confirmed their subscription uh, and that's basically it it's, it's pretty easy and then within that process you will also be asked uh, if you would like to have it hosted on in this case, for example, ConvertKit, and then if you say yes, it'll generate a landing page for you and it'll give you a link. And that link is basically the link to the web page that your sign up form sits on. So you can just take that link and put it where we need to put it. But, but the good thing about all of this is that you don't even have to have your own web page or website to, to get started with all of this. You, you can get started by only having the email um, provider here. And, and use their platform, uh, which is very nice. So, so if, you, if for example, if you're just starting out, uh, and again concerned concerned with with the economy and, and money and, and stuff like that, you can get started without even creating your own website, and that's pretty neat. That is really neat. And I will give a super sneaky pro tip that I didn't listen to when I was a new author, and I regretted it, and I, I fixed it this year. But if you're really good, if you do have your own website and you're good with coding. Um, I highly suggest the link you put in your book is to a page on your own website that you can then redirect to whatever mail service provider, whatever landing page you end up using because guess what? You might change mail service providers. I've been doing this for more than five years. I've gone through three. Um, and every time, you know, I have to keep the old ones going because those books still exist and those readers still exist and they're going to click the wrong link in a dead end. And that's just, you don't want that to happen. But if now I have everything going to my website and that web page will redirect them to the proper mail service provider that I've got going at the moment. Um, Definitely a pro tip that doesn't take much couple coding. Put some notes in the comments if you have questions on how to do that, and I'll help you out. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, of, of course that that's uh, <laughs> after five years that that might end up being a trouble. But but again, I mean, if you're just starting out, this is your first book. You just need to start generating an email list. Don't worry about it too much. You know, you can, don't worry you can, about it at all. Yeah, you can use the mail providers. Uh, uh, have them hosting your landing page and your sign up yeah. form and then give away the PDF and you know don't worry too too much about it but obviously as you as you evolve down your author career path uh, then you want to start thinking about uh, having your own website uh, so that you can control the stuff but yeah that is definitely one of the brilliant things about 
this is that you don't need to have a website and you can just start with you know just the mail service provider using that and it doesn't mean you do not have to wait you don't even have to have your book out as long as you have something to provide a link to give away you know just have short stories out however you do it you can do this on Wattpad even as you're writing things and readers are looking at it you could have it in your profile saying hey you like this sign up for more exclusive content an email address all without a website which is a fantastic way to start building your list as you're writing and growing as an author yeah indeed uh, and of course last two weeks ago we talked a lot about why it is important to build the list and all that so we're not going to get into that here again but um, but just to reiterate uh, that that you should basically set up the list as soon as possible and even before your books are out but but of course the same is true as we talked about last time when setting up the whole uh, system with the autoresponders and all that as we said last time it requires some work and the same is true here um, in the in the sense that um, you're not just gonna let's say acquire subscribers onto your list by magic <laughs> you know it, it requires effort and it requires um, usually probably some money as well I would say um, because essentially you need some traffic and you need to drive traffic to that landing page because just because the landing page exists doesn't mean that people will ever 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 find it uh, and even if you put even if you have your own website and you put the landing page on, on, on your website sorry to say but people will still not check it out so you need to push traffic there and um, if somebody comes to you and say that they, they can get you a thousand subscribers in 30 minutes I would say run for the hills because don't ever <laughs> engage with people like that <laughs> I agree you do not want to get a shoddy list but definitely traffic I mean the best eyes on who are going to be the most interested on you is if you have a completed book but obviously it needs to be selling or you need to be giving it away. There's got to be a way of getting eyes onto it so that they see that you have this link and you're giving away this exclusive content. Um, and one of the best ways that I saw as a new author and getting started is by joining some group giveaways. And those are hosted, sometimes they're hosted on someone's website where basically to pick up, it could be your first book, whatever that exclusive offer is, um, in exchange for an email address. And there are some ways of doing that through other providers that are not your mail list providers. So they would be things like InstaFreeWe, BookFunnel, and the catch is uh, is usually to get those email addresses, you actually do have to pay. You know, it can be 10 20 $30 a month. Um, BookFunnel, I can't remember what it is to be able to collect email addresses, but I know I think it's over $50 a year, but that's not expensive. And you join those giveaways, there's a lot of different authors advertising the giveaway. Readers are going to it and they know that they're signing up for your book or for whatever your exclusive offer is in exchange for your email. You want to get into, this is my big tip though, is you want to get into one where the reader is subscribing specifically, they know it's for your book. There are some group giveaways where people are signing up for a prize, like a Kindle or a suite of like 50 books. Um, but that doesn't mean those readers are going to necessarily be interested in your book or your style. There might be some good emails in there, but you're also going to have a much higher unsubscribe rate if you do it that way. So definitely keep that in mind, that you want to make sure it's genre-specific at the very least, and at the, also that you are you know, you're getting people who know that they're, they are signing up. There's no like hidden catch-22 that you're signing up to get a special deal and um, you're, you know, you're, you're signing up to win a Kindle. And wait, how did you get subscribed to someone's email list? That wasn't part of the deal. Make sure you're upfront about that because that can get you into a lot of trouble and people reporting you for spam or a scammer, and you don't want that. And basically, when we're talking about driving traffic there, um, you obviously have a lot of uh, possibilities. You know, there, there is, there's Pinterest and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and the back of the book, as we said before, which then of course need then you need to sell the books, uh, a lot of books, which means then you need to do advertising to sell books instead. But uh, I think it's pretty hard without paying here in um, in 2019. It, it's pretty difficult to uh, to get email list signups unless you are 
putting a bit of money behind it. I mean, obviously you don't have to spend a ton of money, but even even if you're running like $5 a week on a Facebook ad, that's still better than nothing. Um, and, and you can sort of get the ball rolling a bit. Um, but what I would say is that try to find the traffic sources or platforms. So if that's Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or whatever it is, try to find ones that both sort of suit the way you, uh, it's a platform that you like is what I'm trying to say, but also that it suits your budget. Um, Facebook is notorious of taking all the money you put into it. It can be pretty expensive. It can also be effective if, if you know how to do the targeting well, but try to find maybe one or two of the sources uh, that you like to work with and um, you enjoy and with, it is within your budget and then just be really good at those and figure out how to be really good at those rather than trying to be on eight different media outlets and trying to do Pinterest and YouTube videos and Facebook and YouTube. And I mean, you're, you're going to kill yourself and you're going to get completely overwhelmed. So, so don't try to do that, that figure, figure out which one or two you like, and then go, go with those. Uh, that's one thing. And then I think the other thing is also that you need to be mindful about how it is that you are, let's say, setting it up. Meaning, for example, um, I have seen examples of people who maybe think, okay, I'll start a podcast. And then during that podcast, I will mention that they can get X for free by going to that and that page. Or I will record YouTube <laughs> videos like we do here to talk about uh, ad or give advice to other authors. And then, of course, we could be saying, oh, and by the way, you can get them my free book one uh, by going to that and that link. But the, but the thing is that you need to be mindful about what you're doing, if it's the right audience that you're talking to. I mean, running a YouTube channel, for example, like this one, uh, giving advice to other authors does more or less absolutely zero for our book sales. <laughs> it makes no <laughs> difference whatsoever. We love giving the, uh, we love running the channel here and we love um, giving the advice and all that. But in terms of fictional book sales, it matters zero. Uh, and the same thing will be true for a podcast. If, if you, for example, you create a, a podcast about um, something that isn't really relevant for the reader of the book, then it also will drive no traffic. So, so be mindful about that. Um, but that said, if you can find a way to angle it uh, so that it's relevant for, for the reader, that could be a way around spending money, you know, that you actually spend time instead of money, you know, producing videos or producing podcast episodes. <coughs> so you're investing time and not money. Um, but as I said before, it it requires work. So either you can pay for it or you can put in the time. But no matter what, the build, the list is not going to build itself. No, definitely not. I mean, it would be better if you wanted to just have uh, live videos of you reading parts of your book or chapters or talking about your story. If you're doing videos of that, that would be a better way of saying, and by the way, I have also some free content if you want to sign up for it than to be talking about editing or uh, writing, you know, talking to other authors. Authors, yeah, they might be readers, but that's not your target audience. And that's not really, you're, you're generating a lot of work for something who's not your primary content that you want to give it to. I will say I learned a really great tip that, you know, if you're giving away something, you know, make sure you mention it in your bio. Almost every platform, Facebook, somewhere lets you mention like a little bit of who you are. You can also always make sure you mention, hey, I, I'm an author and I have a free blah, blah, if you sign up here. It doesn't hurt because every time you go and post, if someone are, is interested, they might see that. But again, that is like low, passive, um, definitely not going to get you a thousand subscribers in a couple of days. But it does help to have it there. So, you know, make sure you put the time that if you're giving away something, let people know about it. But make sure you're also letting the people who might be interested in what you're doing, know about it. Talk about your genre, talk about, look at readers, don't be looking at, um, you know, your mom's best friends. They're probably not your target. Well, they might be your target audience, but they're not my target audience. <laughs> it would take too long to gain a thousand subscribers. Just buy a list instead. No, 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 no. That's, don't listen to our a co-host AI who we can't get rid of and we really wish we could. <laughs> this is 
really bad advice because when you buy a list, one, these are people who probably didn't sign up to have their email sold to you, who don't even know if you they like your genre. They don't know anything. This is like, this is, you know, you might as well go out to the street and hold a sign saying, hey, I'm an author giving away books. You'll probably get more people interested than you would for, off of a cold list that you bought. In fact, you really might get a lot of people reporting you that um, you're spamming them and they don't know how you got on your list. And if you got one person out of, say, a thousand people, that would be amazing. You want to try something a little bit better, like take the time, generate someone who's interested in your readings, just go and... Like I said, even if it's posting free videos of you reading your content, even if it's going on Wattpad and posting your chapters and putting at the, at the end of every single one, hey, you can find out more by going to my website. You can do that legally, and they're going to be way more interested than someone who um, you just purchased a, off their name off of a list, and they might have been signing up for cosmetics. It's not going to help you at all. Just come to me and I will sell you 10,000 subscribers and I will even give you a discount. Yeah, you, you definitely do not want to listen to, uh, to him. Uh, but he, he I, okay, maybe he has one point. And the fact is, and that is that it, it takes long to build a list of a thousand subscribers. And, and I think most people, I probably just want to know, okay, but, but how long does that take? And to be honest, and you're not going to like this, but the answer is, I have no idea. <laughs> because essentially what it is, is that um, there is a lot of factors that play into how fast you can build a list, for example, of a thousand people. Uh, it, it, of course, both depends on the strategy you're employing. I mean, are you putting only the link in the back of the book like we talked about before, or, or are you trying to drive people up front? Uh, into uh, something that you're giving away that matters it also matters how attractive potential readers find your giveaway is it something that actually interests them or do they think well i don't really care that makes a big difference meaning how how many who actually gets to the landing page actually converts into subscribers that makes a difference whether 50 percent are converting or half a percent that that that's a big difference of course uh, and then there is just a matter of it also depends on how much money you're putting, uh, you, you, you're putting uh, to get traffic. You know, if you if you have a lot of money to spend on it and you can drive a lot of traffic, then obviously the list is going to be built rather quickly compared to if you can only spend what do I know, six dollars a week or six dollars a month or whatever. But I would still say a little is better than nothing. So even if you do only spend six dollars a month, then do that at least. Uh, 10 subscribers is better than zero, and it's a starting point. It is, and, that's, and it's also the quality of the subscriber. I mean, yeah, you could join a group giveaway, and maybe you can get 100, 200, 1,000 quickly, but what if your open rate, what if their interest is only 10%, where you ended up with 20, 25 subscribers, maybe over the exact same period of time, but they're like 80%, 90%, oh my god, I love you. You want that as 25, way more than you want 10% of a thousand. You you really want to go for the quality. Don't think about the quantity. And, you know, you can have two people who love you and are rooting for you, and they will do so much more for you than having 2,000 people on a list that you never hear from, and it's totally crickets. So keep that in mind, too. You really, it's the connection you build. It's by doing it honestly. And so, yeah, it might take you a little bit of more time to do it organically, um, put in some put in whatever you can, money, time, be creative, get the right people, and tell them, let them share the story of your journey as a writer. Let them become fans of who you are. Right now, an author brand is very much our own journey <clears throat> as writers and authors. Uh, the fans want to know that. Your readers want to kind of know a little bit more about you, not just about the story. I mean, it's like people know George R.R. R. Martin. They, they know more about his life than... Um, probably people knew in the 1970s and 80s about most of the authors that they were fans of. I mean, I knew nothing about Ursula K. Le Guin until probably 10 years ago and then I started looking into it more because now we want to know more about these people and how they live. And that's changed a lot. So sell yourself, connect with your readers, 
build your email list with people who really care about what you're doing and are excited about what you're doing. Don't just take the shortcut and get a whole bunch of numbers behind your email list and think that that's an answer because it's not going to help you in the long run. Wow. So uh, I think that was a perfect conclusion to end on. Um, I don't have anything else to add. Well, great. That's it for this show. At least we gave some tips on email lists and hopefully it'll help a few authors out. All right. Thanks a lot. See you next Monday.